Ahoy there, Pirate Brethren. So, last night we had the most recent episode of The Deck, that is a developer live stream with the guys over at Ubisoft Singapore for Skull and Bones. And I just want to say that from a technical standpoint, this was the best stream that they have done. We have, in every previous live stream, we have had nothing but audio issues. It's been very difficult to kind of follow along with what they've been saying. So, this time they really nailed it and it made it a lot easier to kind of follow along and uh, and make notes and stuff like that. So, well done, guys. Okay, so on this stream, we obviously had Alexis, who is the, um, or Alexi, this is, he is the uh, uh, community manager for Skull and Bones. He has been basically the host of every one of these live streams. This time, we also had him joined by Ernest, who is a senior uh, designer, focusing specifically on ships and ship balancing and anything to do with ships in general. And Samuel, who uh, says he's not part of the quality assurance team, but uh, he is basically the guy that is reviewing the bugs through the bug reporter from the Ubisoft tool and helping to decide where priorities go and stuff like that. These are the same uh, gentlemen that were on the original deck stream, the very first one, right before the launch of season one. And uh, yeah, they, they, I think they, in general, they did a very good job in this stream. Now, this particular live stream honestly didn't have too much in the way of new stuff. This was more about just answering questions than talking about um imminent releases more than anything so yeah they talked about a number of topics and kind of give us some uh, insight but one of the cool things they said was when it comes to kind of like what's in the pipeline they have like three categories short term medium term and long term and the way they define that is that short term is the the idea is if it's a short term change or a short term solution that that means it should be hopefully targeting the game before the end of the current season. So short term should be possible before the end of season two. Medium term is looking at seasons three, possibly season four in before the uh, change comes in. And then long term, this was the most telling thing is long term they said is targeting year two which means despite what a few of us might feel in terms of how the game is doing right now that there is definitely plans at least at ubisoft shanghai uh sorry ubisoft shanghai i'm sorry ubisoft singapore for a year two with skull and bones so that's very very exciting so they have plans they have much longer term plans than we've already been revealed on the uh on the year one roadmap Okay, so they just wanted to address that the uh, there was some updated patch notes released yesterday and some of those changes are not actually going to make their way into the game until the completion of next week's server maintenance on the Monday night and Tuesday afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Um, I'll bring up a little uh, snippet of what those changes are in a second. Okay, so... One of the things, one of the major topics that got brought up was warehouse space. So I think we'll all agree warehouse space is becoming a serious problem. The more they add to the game, the more we're struggling to balance it, especially um, because I feel like there's some serious limitations on how you can actually manage what's in there, particularly with food. Now, what they've said is they are absolutely looking at increasing the warehouse space this is a priority but it is a rather technical thing to do because there is obviously whenever they increase warehouse space it has um implications across the entire platform um but they are looking at just general improvements as well to kind of help mitigate it such as the ability to sell food so you're not just destroying things and getting nothing for it um, as well as obviously improving things like just general UI things like improving the filtering system that they have right now. But yes, they are working on increasing um, the amount of space we have in the warehouse. So that's really good. Okay. Because Ernest was on the uh, stream and he was talking about what he does with like the ship balancing and stuff like that, they wanted to talk about how they collect data in terms of what kind of what goes into ship balancing and i found this quite interesting actually so they are obviously looking at feedback directly from the community so that is people on reddit people on discord people on streams and stuff like that and just basically looking at what people are saying but obviously they're also looking at data that they're collecting from within the game so they can tell 
which items are being used almost all the time. They can tell which items aren't being used at all. So the example he gave is a lot of people will run Black Prince armor if they have it because it's really, really good. But they'll say a lot of people right now are not running any long guns because the long guns are not properly balanced, which I think has been quite widely known. So one of the things they've said is this will mean that long guns might get a buff in the future to kind of encourage people to go back to them. Certain things might get reduced, but they're using a number of sources, including, of course, internal testers as well. So that's really, really good. Um, we also talked about, oh, uh, we talked about stability issues as well. So in particular, the Xbox got uh, mentioned here more than the other platforms. It, said it is affecting other platforms as well, but the Xbox has had some severe stability issues. They're hoping that the recent patch this week has addressed a lot of it, but they know it's not a, it's not a closed topic, that there is still more work to be done. But this is to do with the uh, uh, freezing and uh, crashing back to uh, dashboard issue that's been plaguing particularly the xbox platform i've mentioned myself i've experienced it a few times on my series x okay um fast travel so in case you didn't know if you haven't if you haven't played skull and bones this week since the uh, patch was deployed yesterday um we now have more fast travel options and the general consensus i think is that it's awesome we can now if you are not in combat you can now fast travel to basically any active um, event in the world, whether you're on land or at sea, for the cost of silver. So if there's a world event that's in progress that you might have previously looked at and said, you know, by the time I've fast traveled to the nearest outpost and then sailed out to meet it, either the time is going to be too low or it's going to be too close to its destination for me to actually have an impact. Well, now you can fast travel directly to it for silver, which is really useful for just if you know if you if you're not somebody who has hours and hours and hours to sink into this game, and you expect the ability to just jump in and immediately find something to do, this is such a good quality of life change. And on top of that, if somebody calls for help. You can now fast travel to that to respond to call for help for absolutely no cost of silver. Now, they have also mentioned that there is a couple of issues with that. For example, this is not supposed to work for PvP open world events like the Helm Wager, but apparently it is. So that's being onboarded as something to be looked at. Um, but generally speaking, this has been one of, as I would say, one of the best quality of life changes that they've made to the game thus far. Um, on the subject of PvP modes, Helm Wager, Cutthroat Cargo, they know that there are still some issues with that. There's always going to be issues with that. And they're trying to look at both camps evenly. So those that, you know, enjoy actually doing the attacking and the pursuing rather than those that like to do, do the evading. There's feedback to consider on both sides. However, they've said right now in terms of their PvP focus... They are focused very hard on the new PvP mode for Season 3, which is the 5v5 mode. They really want to put that mode in place for those of us that want to engage in PvP. Um, but they're not going to be abandoning the open world PvP by any stretch of the imagination. It's just that the, the new mode for Season 3 is the priority, which I think will be good. I think, I think I, when, it, when it comes to PvP... The idea of open world PvP is, I, I think it's often more appealing than it is actually in practice. Um, I feel like if you're going to engage in open world PvP, you have to generally expect that you're not going to have a balanced experience because there's just no way to guarantee it. You might be playing on your own in a decent setup PvP ship, but you might just get ganged up on. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing we can do to change that. That's part of the open world experience. But... If you are someone who's interested in PvP and wants a more balanced experience, this 5v5 PvP mode for Season 3 certainly looks like it's for you guys. Okay, um, another topic. The Codex. It's been noted that with the introduction of more items and stuff like that, that the Codex is actually out of date and missing some things. Now, again, they've said they're working on it. They know it needs updating, but it's... Like everything, never quite as simple as you think it is, but they are aware of it. Um, they talked about the balancing of rewards for world events, people looking for specific things. 
Now they've clarified that generally speaking, when you go when you open a chest right now as a reward chest, it is completely random, and they acknowledge that that isn't working um, as well as it would like as it would like it to. So they're looking at changing it, and they're considering a number of possibilities. One of the things they mentioned is rotating on maybe a weekly basis what type of chests drop from what events and what's in there. That's really interesting because if you play the division. Um, the Division 2 specifically, then you know that there's a targeted loot system in that game where you can basically see what event is like or what part of the map is likely to drop what type of rewards and that changes on a weekly basis and it works really really well and it'd be interesting to see if they implement something like that in Skull and Bones. Um, in terms of actually sourcing certain materials as rewards Ernest did mention that if you didn't know this that if you're looking for rewards for like contract for like a uh, ship upgrades that you should go to Blackwood and do his daily contracts one of the rewards he's likely to give out is some of the uh, materials used f for ship upgrades um I didn't know that so I'm going to be testing that out myself because like everyone else right now I'm trying to upgrade my ships and uh really kind of test that system out but it's very expensive and very grindy to do so um they talked about ship cosmetics this was a really interesting one so they acknowledge that there's a part of the community that doesn't so much like a lot of like the fantasy style um graphics that you get with some of the armor sets and uh they want to talk about whether or not there's a, the ability to change the way that a ship looks and make it you know maybe maybe tone it down make it look a bit more real uh realistic and they are looking into it, again, like everything else, um, particularly on hiding things like the armor. They're, they're less focused on changing physical cosmetics of the ship, so the ability to change like what's physically on the deck, like possibly removing the crane from the bark and stuff like that. But again, that's significantly more work. They did categorize this as a longer-term objective, so we shouldn't expect anything like this until at least the second year. Uh, manufactory. They talked about looking at whether or not they're going to allow topping up funding. This has been a big, I think, a big request from the community. Like it is kind of irritating if you're playing the game of trying to have the uh, most productive empire. You've got some manufacturers that are about to run out of funding within a couple of hours, but you don't want to have to sign in again in two hours. You'd rather just top it up now if you have the funding. They're looking at it, um, but it's not in. It's not got a uh, targeted date or anything right now. Um, we got into some more specific topics after this. They talked about the uh, the Mast Breaker perk. This was a question directly from the community. The Mast Breaker perk is a feature of the Skirlock Long Nines um, epic long guns. And this, uh, apparently it's completely, the damage for that is completely unmitigated. Um, now, they made the point of saying that this was one of the very first epic weapons they designed for the game and they wanted it to feel powerful. But that's not to say that it's not subject to future balancing. But really, that was kind of like it's because it's an early epic weapon that that's what's happening. Um, and then, yeah, just a few more points here, but they're really, really good ones. Season 3, they are looking at setting up an insider program for Season 3 specifically for some early testing. Um, likely, that's going to be a PC-only test environment. So I, myself, not part of the insider program, wouldn't get to use it anyway. Um, as I don't game on PC, I game on Xbox. Um, but I feel like definitely with what's coming in Season 3, particularly the uh, PvP mode, an insider program would definitely be beneficial for uh, helping them get that where they want it to go. Okay, now the last two things they talked about, and they saved these right for the end, and it's kind of irritating, but obviously these have been continuing big topics with the community Re uh, recently. Um to a lot of people's uh, frustration, they have lost ships and assets. And what they've said is they have been able to identify most of what's been lost and they're hoping to be returning it to people as soon as possible, recovering what has been lost. But alongside that, they're also looking at a what, they, what they're describing as a generous compensation package for those players that have been affected. And they said details will be coming. This is... A, as soon as possible, obviously, because this has been a very po a big point of frustration for those people that have invested heavily in this game in terms of time and effort to get <laughs> to get forty ships and be upgrading them. 
<clears throat> okay. And then last but not least, they wanted to talk again about large ships. There hasn't been a week go by when I haven't seen comments on my own channel saying, when are they bringing large ships? When are they bringing large ships? So um, Ernest, who is the senior designer focusing on the ships, got a little, got quite transparent about this actually in terms of what they're looking at. So he likes the idea of large ships too. And there is large ships already in the game, particularly if you look at certain like enemy ships that are out there. However, he said, if you are to zoom in at a certain angle and actually look at the deck, of those large ships you'll see that they look kind of empty and barren whereas normally if you look at like a medium ship or a small ship you can see all the little people running around and they said that they haven't actually technically got the scalability yet of all the assets on the large ship and there's technical considerations to consider in terms of all the platforms they're supporting so all the xbox playstation and pc platform builds that they're supporting so there's some serious technical um things to consider about how this is actually going to work this will also obviously go on to affect the current ship upgrade system so right now we're in the you know we're in the season two and we're able to bring small ships up to the level of medium ships but with the introduction of large ships does this mean we the change the ship upgrades to bring small and medium ships up to the level of large ships so that's a major consideration obviously balancing in general is just going to be a major consideration of large ships. So they have categorized this ultimately as basically being in the design stage, and it is long-term. So my personal expectation of this would be that we should not expect large ships within year one, that this would be a year two thing. So maybe I'm wrong, but that's just the feeling I got, that there is some very large implications to consider when introducing large ships. Anyway, I think I got all the major topics they talked about right now. Like I said, this was technically the best stream they've done. There wasn't any audio issues. And generally, I thought it was very, very informative. And it was good to have some kind of real focus on questions that the communities had. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think. If you like quick and consistent Skull and Bones content, please uh, leave me a comment. Consider, you know, leaving me a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.